Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, welcome to my indoor cacti and succulent and houseplant update. I'm going to be showing all of Hansi's uh, collection indoors. Now, I made a video a few days ago of the polytunnel cacti and succulent collection. So if you haven't seen that video, do watch that video. I'll put links down below um, to that video also and also up above. And this is our indoor cacti circle houseplant update. And before I go any further, I want to give a very special thank you to my wonderful fiance Hans, who is behind the camera filming me today. So if you're not familiar with Hans's channel, please do go over and subscribe. Family of Cactus and other beauties links up above. Thank and you. <laughs> I'm gonna start off first of all with our living room. And this is our, our living room here. And we, we're very lucky we have a lovely, a lovely large window that is mainly north facing but it does get a little bit of sun in the spring and summer coming through and we, we grow a lot of our shade loving plants here as you can see and I'm going to start off with this side here um, here we have a, a lovely um, Zami Aculia I've got the name Zam, Zami um, Aculcus Zami Aculia and uh, this is commonly known as the ZZ plant, obviously because it's a difficult one to pronounce. And this was Hans's absolutely gorgeous uh, house plant that he's grown for a long time when he lived in Sweden. And it's one he brought over uh, when he moved. We had this lovely plant in the polytunnel for the spring and summer under the table, so it's in shade, got lots of light. And we put it down back here to overwinter, but that's doing very well. And then we have our chlorophytums that we've got here. We've got uh, three different types down here. This is the um, more or less the all green variety. It does have a little bit of white stripe there, but I think there's two different species that I've potted up together there. Um, but we have the all green variety there, which completely has the um, just completely green. And then we have another variety potted in with it that has the white stripe going on the outside. And then we have this one here, another chlorophytum, and this is chlorophytum ocean, and it's the all green um, in the middle and the two white stripes on the outside. And then we have another chlorophytum over on this side here. <laughs> and this is the more, more commonly seen uh, spider plant, a uh, chlorophytum that has the, the white stripe going in the middle of it with the, the lovely variegation. And we had these out, outside in the yard for the summer, outside the front, the front actually, the front garden, hanging up um, over our door for the summer. They were loving the light, but obviously now they need to come in because of the, the winter. They're not, uh, can't take frost. And then here we have our uh, Schaeffleras. And uh, these are doing really, really, really well because we have them under one of our grow lights. And those of you have been watching, watching my channel and I've been testing out quite a few grow lights recently. And I have to say, I can recommend every single one that I've been asked to review. They're brilliant. These ones are particularly good because they can clip on shelves. And our Schaeffleras, as you can see here, there's no window in this corner. They are shade loving, but they do still like to have light as all plants do. And these, these lights are absolutely brilliant because I have to say, I've really noticed how green they've really gone since you've been using this light. And this is the, um, the Niello one. And uh, it's very, very good clip on light. So recommend that also. Very good, they're doing very well there and obviously like to put crystals all around the plants. Um, <laughs> we love our crystals, me and Hans. And then we have here, yeah, <laughs> Hans is doing a good job there showing you, showing you our crystals. They look lovely around the plants and they give them a bit of a boost. And then our window have got a mixture, as I say, a few different things. We've got a couple of Sansevierias that we had out in the polytunnel for the, um, the summer and we're just overwintering them here in this window, just to overwinter. Nice bright window. As I say, it doesn't get any sun in the winter, but bright enough for, for plants like Sansevierias. Um, people often ask me, can I grow any succulents in a sunless window? Well, all succulents do love sun, except um, Sansevieria, but they do get sun when they're in the polytunnel and they do well, but to overwinter here, pretty good spot there. And we have some African violets, uh, St. Paulias, that's a lovely purple flowering one there, absolutely gorgeous. And we have a little pink one at the back, it's sort of coming to the end of its flowering stage, as you can see there's a few brown ones that need to prune off there. And this is one that we've grown, or Hans has grown I should say, from a single little leaf, and isn't it gorgeous? Another, another couple at the back there, and this one we've got propagating at the moment from a little leaf, absolutely cute as anything. 
Hans did a great job there getting in to show you, all propagated from one little leaf. And then here we have our Ripsalis, um, one of our Ripsalis, not quite sure what, it's like a crisparta type, but it's the bigger leaved variety. And it's got loads of new growth coming out on it at the moment, as you can see the new leaves coming through there. Absolutely beautiful uh, variety of Ripsalis. So that does very well here in our window, in our north facing window. And uh, <laughs> here, oops, <laughs> Hans has got long arms, so it's good to be able to reach there. Here we have our Devalia. And this is an absolutely beautiful fern. We have two of these, one in our kitchen, but this one has completely grown all over this big, big pot here. Um, just look at them lovely furry roots, guys. They're just like a lovely furry tarantula spider's legs. They're gorgeous and uh, very happy there. When it comes to repotting this particular plant that it's growing over, we're gonna have to repot the whole thing as it is. It's gorgeous and uh, Look at them roots, they're just amazing. And then here we have um, lovely big philodendron that uh, Hans brought over from Sweden. It's a lovely, lovely, huge big philodendron there. And also growing next to it, next to it is a Stephanotis um, floribunda. Um, people often think it's a Hoya because it is very Hoya-like. Uh, people say, what's that lovely Hoya in your window? And it is actually um, a Stephanotis but similar in how it grows, like with its rope arrangement, and uh, we just got it hanging up here in the window. And then we have a couple of Streptocarpus. We have Streptocarpus um, Titania, which is this one here, the lovely pinky flowers, again coming to the end of the flowering period. And then we have Stepha, uh, Stepha, um, Streptocarpus, all these names, polka dot purple, which is that one there as well, very beautiful. Gorgeous, and then here we have, um, this is Hans's beautiful, um, it, uh, gosh, what's the name of it now? Monstera. It's nick Monstera, a nickname, the monkey's face, because of the, the, the holes in the leaves. And this is absolutely beautiful, I have to say. Very, very, growing very well in our window here. And then last but not least, in the living room here, we have this gorgeous um, Epiphyllum, or sometimes called Selenicerius too, Chrysocardium. And it's nicknamed the Fern Cactus because it resembles a fern in its appearance, but it's definitely not a fern, I can guarantee it's a cactus. Epiphytic Cactus, which is why it has the um, little aerial roots coming from it. Absolutely beautiful leaves on that. Um, very, very beautiful there. And uh, hopefully we shall get flowers from that one. They've put out so much new growth. Seems very, very happy in that situation in the window. Isn't it gorgeous, guys? Very good. Hans did a good job there. So that's the living room house plants. <laughs> and I'm going to show you our kitchen um, succulents and cacti. <laughs> Now we're in the kitchen and we have our two shelves that we have to house a lot of the house plants in here. We have a lot of different types as you can see. Um, we have a mixture of um, more streptocarpus, um, we have pilia peperomioids and uh, different types again. We have begonias, this is begonia little tiger, absolutely beautiful plant and one we got from a charity shop for about a pound a couple of years ago now and this is actually, that was actually the original plant and this was actually propagated from one single leaf and the, the baby one has overtook the mother in size, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful and uh, here we have um, quite sure this one it was gifted to us as a cutting beautiful plant anyway and this is a Bucania recavata here and here we have um, Ananas commonly known as the pineapple plant here and we have some yuccas uh, yuccas are cold hardy to a degree but we decided to bring these in anyway because they're still in the rooting stage but they're doing very 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 well here and they love a lovely bit of sharp the leaves add a nice bit of variety amongst all the other types of house plants on here. And then we have um, the streptocarpus, their lovely big, big leaf on that one too. And this one is a clivia as well. And the clivia and the yuccas were gifted to us by our wonderful friend Olga from Olga's Dreamland. So um, thank you, Olga. They are growing remarkable. And uh, here we have 
and Aspidistra. And this is a new addition to our plant family. It was gifted to us from our friend Shona. She separated her plant to repot it and she had loads of extra, extra ones come from the same mother plant. So um, she gave us this beautiful, beautiful Aspidistra here. So it's settling in really, really nice. And then this one is Hans's amazing Tradescantia plant that he brought over from uh, Sweden. And we cut it back quite a few times and took cuttings from it and given all the cuttings away as gifts to people. And it is just remarkable. It has been in flower um, up until pretty recently. Still got some more buds again coming up on it. But it is a really, really, really beautiful, beautiful house plant. As you can see there, it's so gorgeous. And then we have um, at the top here, we have another Devalia, as I mentioned earlier, in the living room, lovely sort of furry rhizomes there. And yes, we have even a little begonia growing in there. One of the leaves fell off the, the other two plants I showed you there, fell into the pot and just took root. So um, when we pop this, we're gonna have to somehow separate it, but it seems very happy there. We have a couple of ferns. We have a big fern at the back um, there, that is a, one of the, it's nicknamed the um, blue blue foot uh, fern. <laughs> um, absolutely lovely there. Um, lovely, it gives a lovely blue coloration. And this other lovely fern here also has a, the furry rhizome roots. Absolutely gorgeous there, as you can see. And then we have um, begonias here. We have a lovely begonia. Um, the lovely the polka dot begonia there, the lovely spotty leaves, absolutely beautiful. And then we have another begonia, size more that has the lovely hairy leaves, as you can see there. And um, that sort of puts out a load of new growth, then drops its leaves and puts a load of new growth out. It's sporting a load of new leaves again now, which is wonderful. And here we have some more uh, Tradescantias. This is one from the mother plant that we just showed you. This one is a, a variegated. Um, Variegated Tradescantia there, very pretty with the lovely pink and the green together in the variegation. And this one is another lovely Tradescantia that has pink underneath and green leaves, bit of a thinner, thinner leaf version of this big one here. And that was also gifted to us as a cutting from Olga, so absolutely wonderful there, beautiful plant. And then we have a couple of little babies of uh, Schaffleras from the two big mother plants in our living room there, they're doing very well. And then we have a lovely uh, Tradescantia there as well. It's one of the ones with the little white fur, fur leaves on, doing very well. And we have a couple of grow lights that we do have attached, as you can see, um, underneath onto the shelves. And we only really put the grow lights on on dark days. If it's very dark, we'll put the lights on to give the plant a bit of an extra boost just to help them form photosynthesis but when it's a nice bright sunny day like this there's plenty of light and sun coming through this window in our kitchen so we don't really need to worry about putting the lights on which is great perfect and then I'm going to show you what we've got here in our in the kitchen window and uh, we have here all our youthful well the majority all but one in the polytunnel of our euphorbias and this one is a is a big euphorbia ingens and we've got it under the grow light which is a 50 watt led grow light by kingbo just so to keep it overwintered just so it keeps its uh, photosynthesis up because as i say there's no window here at this part and by putting that light on there and having it on just for the normal natural day length hours it would normally be for light at this time of year it's like expanding the window so it gives it an extra extra window space <laughs> and um, that's I'll just check where I am with the oh yeah we're okay because I know the cut they cuts off after so many minutes my camera so um, <laughs> and then here this is the euphorbia tiracali absolutely beautiful plant as you can see here very 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 happy again it gets the extra light coming in not only from this part of the window but also the part from um, the grow light too they're great grow lights like mobile windows. This is our patchy podium euphorbia. Very, very nice here too. And um, here we have a mixture of two. We take too long to show you all the individual um, euphorbias. And I have made a, a euphorbia video, especially showing you all the euphorbias we've got. So um, I'm going to put the link up to that video up above. So do check that video out. It's a bit more detail about all the different types of euphorbias here. And... Um, 
We have here a Hoya Linearis full to the brim of tons and tons of beautiful little flowers there. And this has been flowering for absolutely weeks. As soon as a bundle of flowers dies off, another, another bundle opens up. It's just so beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Lovely here in the window. And so here we have a selection of uh, all our different types of euphorbia. Some of the Medusa ones and all different sizes, many different types. And uh, <laughs> the lighting might be a bit too bright, so I'm not quite sure how. Um, how's it looking, Hansu? Oh, that's good. Here's a nod on his head, so that's coming out okay. And we have, say so here, lots of different um, euphorbias. And we have some of our Tillandsia air plants as well in the wind uh, here. Um, jotted amongst all of our different types of euphorbias. And uh, euphorbia milleis that are all blooming beautiful at the moment. It's a lovely white flowering one. And a lovely... Um, Lovely red flowering one there, doing very, very, very well. And uh, here we have, um, at the moment, this is absolutely amazing. This is our euphorbia, Mayher, Mayherani, Mayher, Mayher, Mayher Anthony. And uh, it is blooming beautiful. I made a video um, a few, yeah, a while ago now when it first started to bloom and it's even more beautiful now. It just hasn't stopped blooming. And again, one of our Tillantias here, this is the Cacticola, um, because it grows on uh, cacti in its natural habitat, doing very well there. And here we have some beautiful um, Dracaenas, two different types, we have the, the dark uh, variegated Dracaena with a lovely red outer edging, and then we have the variegated uh, Dracaena here. A lovely big uh, Begonia at the back, Begonia albopicta which is also a spotty leaved variety as well, but it's a much smaller spotty leaved variety. Lovely in that back, in the back wall here, and that's the lovely leaves as well. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful house plants. Gorgeous. And then we have um, the Palacesarius, which is just overwintering here, and the sun just come right onto it when the sun comes into this way. Another Dracaena here. This is a lovely, again, another lovely variegated variety with much wider leaves. Very beautiful. And then we have this lovely euphorbia here as well. Another type of different types of euphorbia. And then in our window, we have a load of tillantias. <laughs> lots and lots of different types of uh, tillantias there, as you can see, from Spanish moss to different types, all growing here. And although I wouldn't normally recommend putting tillantias in a sunny window, because we are here in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, we don't get a lot of sunshine, so they seem to do pretty good in this window. But if you've got tillantia air plants in a very sunny climate, you're best to put them in a shadier window. Just bear that in mind. But they, they seem to do very well here. This, we've had these now for over two, well, yep, yeah, two years, and they seem to be very happy there. We've got them on the driftwood. So that's, that's very good. <laughs> and then we have here um, some of our tall, <laughs> Tall cacti that we were overwintering, purely to overwinter, in our kitchen. A few different types here, we've got the Euphorbia one, um, we've got the, the um, Pylocerius one, Steno Stenocerus, and uh, different ones, and Trochocerus pachanoid. And these are all ones that um, are either too cold sensitive to be kept in the polytunnel because they prefer to have a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius and higher or they're just ones that were kept too wet because they've been in the yard and they got a bit too wet and we wanted them to dry out quicker so we just brought them in and we're just going to keep them into overwinter now and uh, this uh, I see loads of Pylocerius there very good all the different types and this one is a um, Trichocerus uh, Pachanoi times Scopolicola and so normally is one that I keep out in the polyton because it is very cold hardy. But again, it got soaked a bit too late in the year and it was in a, it's in a big pot, so it's kept too wet. So be on the safe side of overwintering that one indoors. And that's it, guys. <laughs> so that's the, um, the kitchen and the living room. And now I'm going to show you what we've got upstairs. Now, guys. Here is our staircase and a note bar me. Those of you who've been watching our videos know that we've made a video when we overwintering the very, very, very tall cacti that are either too tall for the polytunnel because they're just touching the roof or they're not cold, they're not uh, hardy enough to be kept in the polytunnel and they're too tall for the house so they have to go on the stairs we've got a bit of headspace. And this is a Brasilia puncture, Brasiliensis, and it's a very old plant as you can see. 
a very very uh, lovely 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 cactus to grow and believe it or not even though it's been indoors now for about a month it has still been flowering up until recently we have a very good grow light at the top there by Gemma which is another type of grow light that we got last year again very happy with that one too that puts full spectrum lighting all down and to give plenty of full spectrum light onto these plants we've turned it off now obviously because we're filming but it gives a great light very good very happy with that too and uh, that's lovely and then this is our, our very tall Pilosocereus that again is not cold hardy one but it's too tall for our kitchen so we happen to obviously over winter them on the staircase because of the headspace um, with the house so that's doing very good and then we have this amazing big tall Trichocereus that Hans has grown himself from seed about 47 years ago now and uh, look at the size of it guys again this one is a cold hardy one that could have stayed out in the polytunnel but it's too tall for the polytunnel so we have it out in the yard during the summer and the only place we could put it is on our staircase because obviously the ceiling would be too short for the for the top of it we didn't want to cut it but um that's doing remarkable look at that guys lovely big trichocereus absolutely beautiful gorgeous so that's the staircase three big giants and now I'm going to show you um, what we've got in our little bathroom. Now here we are in our little bathroom, we only have, we only have a few plants in here because it's only a little bathroom but we've got all our um, bromeliards and tradescantias air plants. As I say we had some more air plants downstairs in the kitchen and we have the other ones here in our bathroom. It's a shady window so it gets shade so it doesn't let, let sun in but not intensive sun. Not that we ever get intensive sun here in Ireland anyway so as I mentioned earlier. And we have some of the air plants here on driftwood that we found when well, we've been out and about walking the beaches here. Another Tillandsia here air plant as well and a selection of all different types of Tillandsia air plants. I can just turn it around there so you can see. This one has recently been flowering, just the flower heads dying back there. Beautiful pink coloration there. Absolutely beautiful. And the flowers are stunning on Tillandsias when they flower. As I say, we just give them a good soaking with rainwater every other day so it thoroughly soaks them and then we let them dry out completely. And we'll use a bit of a, a Tillandsia air plant fertilizer maybe once or twice um, during the month. That's all we really, really do. Um, give them a good soaking with rainwater and not tap water because a lot of tap water contains too many salts for these plants. And uh, this is our lovely big uh, Xerographica Tillandsia. It's an absolute beauty. Just look at the size of it, guys. And here we have some Tillandsias here, plants on our one of our bromeliards, doing very, very well there. Lovely little roots. And the roots aren't for nutrients. They, they put the roots to anchor their support in their natural habitat. So that's why there'll be growing roots on them here. And another Tillandsia here. Uh, lovely and a lovely big one there as you can see and that's our lovely little Tillandsias in our bathroom and uh, now I'm going to show you the ferns in our bedroom Now guys, this is our little bedroom where we have our collection of um, our Nephrolepis ferns and we have about four or five different types of Nephrolepis This is um, our biggest Nephilepis, commonly known, Nephilepis exaltata, commonly known as the Boston fern and it is just gorgeous as you can see, it's just so happy here and we have it on top of a lovely vase that was Hans's family, like a family heirloom, absolutely beautiful birds on it and everything like that, it's so pretty, look at that guys and uh, this fern absolutely loves been in here as I say it's a north facing window but it's very bright so perfect for these ferns and different types all different types of nephilepis some have got smaller little leaves and some have got uh, more uh, longer leaves and different varieties and this one here is a bit more of a little curlier sort of wavy type of variety but uh, it's very very happy <laughs> so that's our lovely nephilepis collection and now I'm going to show you um, what we've got in our grow rooms. Now guys, here we are in one of our grow rooms. It's also Hans's music room. <laughs> and um, 
this it, we've had to just switch the grow lights off because we have a lot of our seedlings and plants we sort of still propagated under this and obviously it's difficult to film with the lighting uh, when the grow lights are on with the camera but i'll start over this side here now these are the majority of all of our seedlings that we've grown ourselves from seed these are mixed cactus seeds here and um, at the back we've got some epiphyllum seeds um, which we've got over there uh, all different types we've got red butcher seeds we've got echinopsis seeds we've got mammillaria seeds we've got little lophophora seeds all different different types here and this is rather funny because this is actually meant to be um, Cleister cactus collidimonsis, which you can clearly see that is. But this one, the one next to it is clearly looks like a mammillaria, um, that seedling that must have got in there by mistake. But it's very healthy and happy. These are, are um, Euphorbia canariensis seedlings growing very well here. A mixture of a few more different seedlings also there too. And then we have Astrophytum seedlings. Aren't they cute, guys? They are so adorable. And uh, here at the front, we have um, more sort of Echinopsis. These are little ex Echinopsis pups that were gifted to us from people's plants. And a mixture of everything here. Um, Christmas cactus seedlings and Easter Ripsolidopsis seedlings as well. And our um, Seti Echinopsis is mirabilis that aren't are, they are sort of seedlings but we never sowed them we got these uh, earlier this year and uh, they're sort of settling in there uh, very cute and then here we have a lovely clerodendron here that uh, Hans has got wrapped up over there growing remarkable as you can see very 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 beautiful and uh, here we have um, yeah that's the top of it <laughs> very good and then we have um, here, we've got Prescia godsefianas. Um, these are two um, big mother plants that of Hans's that he brought over from Sweden. And we've got some more uh, Prescia godsefianas in my office, which is also another grow I'm going to show you. Um, these have beautiful leaves and they are actually cacti, guys. People think they're just a succulent, but they are actually a cactus because they have areoles and spines coming out of. But they're nicknamed the leafy cacti because like Presky and Preskyopsis also will be in the leafy cactus uh, variety. Here again, all crystals around the pots. And here we have more seedlings as well. Here we have um, Stapelia seedlings and uh, Echinopsis seedlings and uh, all different, different, different types and varieties here. All doing very, very well growing well under these under the grow lights these grow lights we have are by Kingbow and they're quite super powered ones but um, as I mentioned earlier we, we're testing out a lot of grow lights very happy we can't really fault any of them um, it all depends on what you're looking for really and uh, so they're different types that's good Hans did a great job of getting closer you can see all of the seedlings and here we overwinter in our stapelias because they prefer to be kept a little bit warmer in our experience anyway um, at this time of year so we overwinter them inside the house a lovely um, Cristata one as well and more little baby seedlings the, the, these were gifted to us from uh, the seeds were gifted to us from Clyde from um, Cl Clyde Morris's channel um, he has a fantastic channel as well and we have here little baby Ariocarpus seedlings and Lophophora seedlings growing but if you want to know what the white is at the top it's just white sand guys they're doing very well here and a mixture of other little seedlings mammillarias and everything that we've all propagated ourselves growing remarkable there and uh yep Hans is going to show you there he's lifting the lid off some more seedlings there what's them again Hansi? um oh what's the name of it now <laughs> but there's more more yeah. More oh. growing anyway there. I can't mm. remember. <laughs> oh. We've got so many but seedlings. We have got everything wrote down somewhere. I have it here. So oh. it's a very special one. And I'm very Pulaskia. happy. Chichi. Pulaskia. That's Pulaskia. It. Pulaskia. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the ones that I'm not as familiar so, yeah. with. So it's hard to be. Pulaskia. They are really they gorgeous are, little yeah. seedlings. Adorable. <laughs> they really plants. are. Yeah. And uh, here, more stapelias overwintering. And uh, big bucania at the background there. Absolutely lovely. And in the window, we have a selection of all of the, some serious cacti that are not so cold hardy that we want to overwinter. They're in, they're in the window, which is great, so they don't necessarily need to have the grow light there. We've got plenty of light to overwinter. And uh, 
lots of different types of cereus, as you can see. And then here we have, um, this is commonly known as um, the poinsettia plant, but it's Euphorbia pulchima, and it has um, lovely red, wrongly called flowers, but they actually form red bracts, usually around the Christmas time and into the January. And we have this here in the window. So it'll be interesting if it forms the flowers again. It starts forming. Yes, it is. Look, yes, yeah. well done. So Once you see that it's starting um, the red coloration on the top, so that's starting to form. Short day plants. And so. little crystals as well we put round. So that's doing well. So that's this room here. And now I'm just going to show you um, my office and the other little grow room we've got. And uh, then that will be it. Now guys, this is uh, my office, which is also my grow room as well. And here we have a hanging basket. Um, so not yet, a hanging basket stand filled with a lot of the hanging basket plants that are not cold hardy. As you know, in my polytunnel update, I have a lot of epiphyllums and some also slumbergeras in the polytunnel that, are, that overwinter well in there. Um, but these ones are ones that I find in my experience don't like to be kept um, below 10 Celsius because they tend to scar and go brown and scabby. So it's better to overwinter them in here. And we have quite a few different types of Ripsalis. This one's Ripsalis albirillata, and um, that is coming up with loads of buds. Look at that, guys, tons of fluffy little buds. So that's going to be blooming beautiful soon. Very excited about that. And then we have um, some Hylocereus dragon fruits. That's one I've actually grown myself from seed, and that's going to need to be repotted in the spring. And here we have a lovely Ripsalis crispata. And uh, this was flowering up until recently, and now the little flowers are dying back as well. And uh, very exciting to see it was flowering. It's a beautiful plant, look at that. And then uh, here we have a Ripsalidopsis, commonly known as the Easter cactus. And it can be sort of overwintered pretty cool, but it suffered a little bit in the polytunnel last year. It got a bit of scabbing, so I'm bringing it up. Bring, brought it in this year to overwinter on the plant stand to be on the safe side. Here is another another Ripsalis and there's actually about four or five different types of this particular Ripsalis in this hanging basket. This is the more sort of clumping um, small little tiny thin stemmed one there that goes into almost like little balls and this one is more the long pendant stems as well. We have a few underneath another little one this is almost like grass this one it's so thin and then you've got the big massive, um, this particular Ripsalis here comes down trailing almost like pendant style coming all the way down with lovely little bunches of uh, lovely hanging stems. And this, this particular type of Ripsalis, I say there's five different types of this type of Ripsalis, it forms lovely little white flowers in the, in the winter time as well as it, sometimes in the spring as well. Beautiful. And then we have here, this is one of my very old favourites. Uh, Plant. This is a Ripsalis paradoxa and it's nicknamed the mistletoe cactus because of its obvious resemblance to mistletoe with the joins there. And it's a beautiful cactus, it has tiny little white flowers on it in the spring and also sometimes in the winter and then it produces little white berries. And it's lots of, look at all the new growth on that, loads and loads and loads of new growth. And I was worried about this plant because it wasn't doing too well in the summer. Um, we had it out in the yard and, and it does not like to have a lot of sun, it prefers shade. And since I moved it into the office, it's really greened up and put out so much new growth. So, and this is not a cold hardy one at all, it really does scab badly in cold. So um, that's happy here. So as you see, I have a lot going on here. And then I have at the back there, uh, Hans is doing a great job. It's wonderful to have my hands free to, uh, to show. Um, this is another Hylocereus dragon fruit as well. One that I've had for, for a long time too, also grown from seed. And this one here is one that my friend Susan, when I lived in Waterford, has grown from seed. So this, this is one that she, she has grown. And again, these are going to be repotting in the spring because they're going to need a bit of fresh soil and a bit of a repot. But wrong time of year to do it now. And then here is my lovely ficus tree, commonly known as the rubber plant, doing very well in that corner there. And uh, here we have a mixture of a bit of everything. I'll just get into here so I can... Uh, this one here is um, 
The Aslumbergera Orange Brazil, and it is in bud, which I'm very happy to see, has beautiful orange orange flowers on it. And this has a lovely red coloration to the leaves. That this particular type of um, Slumbergera uh, tendensa Orange Brazil um, has, it has lovely wide leaves on it. And then we have a few things I'm just propagating in that corner there under the grow light, a mixture of everything called cuttings and things, some that rooting in water. And uh, here we have a Sansevieria here. And the reason why these plants are in a bit more of a shadier spot, we have got a grow light there as well, but they these particular plants can take a bit more shade. And because I'm rooting cuttings, they just get a bit of shadier light than being directly in the window. As I say, Sansevieria is there, the lovely big way off in Sansevieria. That's a young little way off in there, and the bigger one. And got Presciopsis cuttings that we root in in water very well at the moment. As you can see there, <laughs> I don't know if you if you can see there, but um, here then we have a lovely big um, Sansevieria that was Hansi's Sansevieria he brought over from Sweden. He's had a long time, and it has flowered for us with the most beautiful flowers that smell incredible the year before. So hopefully it will flower again. It's a winter flowering plant. So fingers crossed it will flower again. And then here we have a mixture of absolutely everything in my office window, guys. Um, this one, he's a Cissus quadra, quadra, quadrilla, quadrilla, yeah, Cissus quadrilegleria. Oh, gosh, I just, these words, guys. And it is very unusual type of plant. It just produces like little leaves, um, sometimes from the, the autumn, spring and summer as well. But it sort of dropped the leaves now. I think it's going for a bit of a, a rest period. Um, but he has put out a lot of new growth at the top there. Um, here we have a Hoya heart, heart Hoya there. And this one is another Hoya. This is a Hoya Carnosa that we've got hanging all the way up, up in the window. <laughs> Doing very well. That has been blooming beautiful all through the spring, summer and into the early fall. It's only just stopped blooming, guys. That The last bundle of blooms fell off um, after it had come to the end. It's amazing. This is a little Hoya Bella here which was gifted to us this year as a, as a little plant. Absolutely beautiful, so that's doing well. Again, we have a mixture. We have um, Ripsalidopsis here that are all from cuttings. This is my old uh, Ripsalidopsis that's still in the rescuing. Um, it, it's recovered very, very well then. It had, I think, a case of spider might need shred a lot of leaves but it's recovering again loads of new growth coming on it which i'm very happy to see so this is one that i rescued those of you who may be familiar with so i'm happy to see it's making a good recovery again after it got knocked back from the spider mite and now it's sending out new leaves again so and by the way i treated the spider mite with sb invigorator which i do we spray on our plants every every couple of weeks just to keep the pests um, away and it's also gives the, the plants a bit of a booster here and uh, here we have got um, my Slumbergera trunk, one of my Slumbergera truncatus, blooming beautiful with white flowers, guys. Look at that, beautiful white flowers and it has a lovely pink throat in the middle there and a pink stigma. Oh, it's just so stunning. So this is lovely. This has been flowering now for quite a few days and more flowers are opening up. And what's remarkable is the Slumbergera, um, commonly known as the Christmas and Thanksgiving cacti, are flowering much earlier than the ones in the poly that we've kept in the polytunnel because the temperature's much colder in there. They take longer for them to, to bloom. But lovely to see. Tons of blooms. Then here we have, um, this is the Prescia Gossefiana um, cactus again that we mentioned earlier. These are cuttings come from Honzi's, um, the two mother plants that we showed you just before in the other room, in the other grow room. And uh, look at the beautiful leaves, guys. They're beautiful. And yep, it's cactus, <laughs> the leafy cacti, but they so don't look like leafy cacti. And these are more uh, leafy cacti here. These are more prescuous, different types of prescuous we've got here also. And uh, very different in their appearance. And this has a fantastic seed pod on it. This was beautifully flowering. This is the Prescia Romiana and it had beautiful pink flowers on it in the summer and we pollinated them and we have a big a big fruit pod forming. So very exciting to have seeds. And this is another, um, as well, another Prescia here. Let's check the name on that because it's really hard to remember all the names. This is um, Qua, um, yeah, um, Quill Abentia um, and but, but it's one of the prescues anyway, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Um, we have Ocotillo here, two different types. This is an Ocotillo here and another type of Ocotillo as well, the crown of thorns. And uh, 
Here then we have a mixture of everything. <laughs> we have some um, Pino Serious. Now these are Pino Serious Greg Eyes um, that I've grown from seed. Um, probably about four years old now and they're doing really well. Um, they're, they struggle to keep, they're difficult plant to grow from seed but these ones thank goodness seem to be doing very well. And then this is my Slobergia Apuntioids that got hit by spider mite as well. And um, I did make a video when it got hit and the, the top leaves fell off, the top pads I should say fell off. But look at that guys, loads more new pads forming. So very, very happy to see that. As I say, the SB Invigorator worked really well with knocking the pests away. And uh, here we have um, Selenicerius, um, Selenicerius grandiflorus, a few different types here, all different ones. And here we have a mixture of Slumbergia cuttings that are also coming into bud. These are all different flowering types as well. Little bit of Salidopsis uh, cutting there, coming on his Easter cactus, forming new little pads. And uh, here we have, um, yep, also, yep, this is a lovely, lovely plant as well. This is a, a Delo, Delo Sperma, um, and this one was a cutting from Daz from Cacti Mania. So absolutely doing very well. It's rooted because it's took took its little firmness there. And this one is an Opigona denegrii, and um, this one is also from Daz from Cacti Mania, settling very well there. We have that under the grow lights as well. And then here we have um, a mixture of a few different things. This one is another Slumbergera truncata. Again, this one is a lilac flowering one, absolutely beautiful with the lilac flowers there. Very, very, very pretty. And that's flowering beautiful. That was just a cutting I got last year from a friend and um, it is doing remarkable, I have to say. And uh, this one again, it's a bit of a mystery succulent that we got from our friend Patricia. Not sure what it is, but it's a lovely, lovely succulent. Here we have um, a, uh, Ananas, um, the pineapple plant as well, growing very well there. And then we have our mellow cacti. Now these are overwintering here because they're again not cold hardy. They need a minimum of about 10 to 12 degrees Celsius, about 40, um, about 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, so the mellow cacti are overwintering there. And then we have a mixture. We've got some chlorophytums, different types. We've got the chlorophytum bonnie, which is a curly leaved one, and the other chlorophytum there, um, the wider leaf, one of the chlorophytum ocean. And as I say, we had some more chlorophytums downstairs in our living room. Tradescantias here as well. And um, these chlorophytums are what I've grown from seed. And when you grow, grow chlorophytum from seed, it always comes out green even when you're sowing the variegated form because that's how they grow, just completely green without the variegation. Uh, so these are mainly all sort of still under the propagation stage. We have here Serapagia woody eyes, both the variegated and the traditional one doing very well. And uh, these are a lot of these are growing, growing under the grow lights. And as I say, we're testing them out. We've got the Niello grow light, the Kingbo grow light, the Spider Farmer grow light. They're all fantastic. I have to say the Spider Farmer one has been brilliant for these plants as well. Um, and here we have the um, orchids, Phalaenopsis, all blooming beautiful, as you can see there. And we have dendrobiums that are not flowering at the moment, but they're, they're stu still doing very, very well. Miltoniopsis as well. And then we've got uh, Preschiopsis here. And we have a, a grow light on in the corner here, switch it off now obviously for the video. But they do get a lot of natural light as well and remember that these type of cacti are just overwintering. Preschiopsis, um, again I like Preschia, they're the leafy cacti um, and they're often used as grafting plants too with a lot of uh, people who like to graft uh, cacti onto them. You can see it's a bit of a mixture of everything as you can see there. And here is a lovely big um, um, epiphyllum that I got it's a very old epiphyllum that Minhan's got from a fantastic garden centre here in Dublin um, called Urban Plant Life. And this, I mean, epiphyllum is, is hardy to be overwintered at a minimum of five degrees Celsius, but because this is quite a precious epiphyllum um, and I wanted to repot it, I did bring it into the house, but I've left it too late now. So I'm going to rather than put it back into the polytunnel, it's got used to the house temperature. I'm going to overwinter this here and then I'm going to um, put it out again in the, in the spring into the polytunnel, probably out into the yard. So that's going to be lovely. Very old epiphyllum, as you can see. I'm going to be repotting that as well in the springtime. 
And then here we have our ferns, a selection of a few, just say we had our Nephilepis ferns. These are different types of ferns as well, which we also have an extra grow light on cloudy days, um, just to give them a bit, bit of extra light. I say ferns prefer shade anyway, so we only have the grow light on um, if it's a particularly dark day, just to give them a bit of a booster to help with phot photosynthesis. And then we have here this gorgeous big Alocasia. Um, plant that was gifted to us again from our wonderful friend Olga from Olga's Dreamland and when she gave it to us it was just like a little a little leaf and this has just come on remarkable by the way guys that looks disgusting but I can guarantee you it's good for the soil this is actually um, some some um, mushroom fungus that grows on top of the soil and we just leave it because it's harmless and it's actually beneficial for the soil too so that's sort of dying back now and I have made a few videos on that, mentioning that. So if you have that on your house, it's common at this time of year. It's nothing to worry about. But this is growing remarkable. Again, we have a grow light we put on if it happens to be particularly dark days because it gives it an extra boost in here. And then another chlorophyton that I've had for a very long time here. And uh, that I've had for a very long time. And that's pretty much it guys. I think that's every, the whole house covered. And I'm so sorry it's an extremely long video. Um, oh gosh, Hans just reminded me. Yeah, the back, the back, the back window here. Oh my gosh, I thought it was done. Yeah, we have a select, yeah, that's the Hoya. Now that's our Hoya Kerry plant, um, commonly known as the Sweetheart Hoya because it has beautiful heart-shaped leaves and beautiful little flowers on it. Um, had been flowering this year for us, but it's gorgeous. That's getting a nice bit of light there in the window. And then in the, the window here, this is a south facing window. So we're overwintering cacti that um, need to be overwintered indoors. Um, the Areocereus at the very back there is a cold hardy plant, but I had to treat it as a cutting because it got root rot. So that's why I'm overwintering it indoors this year. And here is a, it's a, that's a Pino, Pino serious, um a uh, Cristata plant, again, prefers to be above 10C, 50 degree Fahrenheit, that's why that's overwintered inside. Then here in the window, it's the Pilocereus gunellii, and I just love its little arms coming out. And that, again, is not a cold, hardy one that has to be overwintered indoors, but it's a minimum of 50 degree Fahrenheit, uh, 10 degrees Celsius. And here is um, Umbermania, Ubermania. And uh, not commonly seen in cultivation, that needs to be overwintered as well at a, a minimum of a 10C, 50 degree, uh, 50 degree Fahrenheit. Not a cold hardy one, it's very special, so that's why they're in. And um, this one here, a few different types, that's a little a puncture there, in the, known as Puna claveroides. Um, quite a rare, unusual type of uh, a puncture. Again, a bit too special to leave outdoors because it's a bit vulnerable and it's only a young plant. And uh, here we have a Houdia as well, not cold hardy. And uh, here we have Hansi's amazing Parodia Lenny Housey eye um, that he's had for many, many years, packed with, packed with pups at the base. And this one is a little pup from my big one that sadly died. And um, it's, Hansi's big plant is almost like a surrogate mother for this little one in here. <laughs> and then I have my Serious Spiralis cactus doing very well in the window there. And also the Matilio cactus geometricans in the window, commonly known as the booby plant for obvious reasons. <laughs> and then here we have a lovely um, Kleister cactus um, that is Hansi's that he brought over from Sweden. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Um, not quite sure of the type of Kleister cactus it is, but it's, it's very cross. special. Yeah, it's a cross. It's a cross one. So. Um, a hybrid there, very beautiful. And then we have some um, Hylocereus types um, and Selenicereus all in the window there. Whew, that's it guys. <laughs> and a few in the window as well. That Oh yes, that, that is um, uh, Sawaru, um, about five years old little Sawaru, um, young seedling that was gifted to us from um, Keith on Groovy Man 1969 here on YouTube. That's doing very well, and I have an Astichium, um, Astichium rit um, Riterii there also, and uh, it's great. It's great the hunter's got long arms so he can reach. Ah, and then we have the Astrophytums that were gifted to us from Daz from Cacti Mania. So Daz, if you're watching this, we have the gorgeous two um, Astrophytums there in our south facing window. They are doing very, very well. As I say, Astrophytum is quite cold hardy, um, but because they're young and um, it's the first year we've had that we wanted to overwinter them in the window in the house just to be on the safe side. 
And then, yes, well done, these as well are carnivores. This is Drosera, Drosera carnivore, uh, commonly known as the sundews because they catch the little insects. And these are Nepenthes here. And Nepenthes um, carnivorous plants are not cold hardy, so you do have to, they're tropical. You have to overwinter them indoors in a house or somewhere where it's tropical and warm if you're, if you're in a cold climate. And our other carnivorous plants, we've got Venus flytraps and Saracenias, but they're all out in our cold little greenhouse. And we were overwintering them outside in the cold greenhouse, not indoors, because they like to be kept uh, cool, um, a cooler temperature. And uh, but the Nepenthes like to be kept a bit warmer. And uh, the Drosera, the Sundrews, uh, can also be overwinter cold, but you can keep them going if you want to also indoors, it's optional with this. So that's it, my gosh. And again, apologies for an extremely long video, guys. If you've watched it all the way this far, fantastic. And if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti, so if you're new to the hobby, do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.